Since assuming office, President Ibrahim Traoré has demonstrated unwavering dedication to combating the long-standing issues of insecurity and terrorism that have plagued Burkina Faso. His actions serve as a testament to his fervor and determination to restore safety and security to Burkina Faso. Following the ineffectiveness of the French military forces, who were subsequently expelled from the country by Traoré, he took steps to equip the Burkina Bay military adequately to confront the challenges at hand. During France's presence in the country, exerting influence over various aspects from politics to economics, they ensured that the Burkina Bay military was deprived of the necessary equipment and materials required to combat the insurgents, thus creating a dependency on France for military resources and expertise. Recall that in 2023, the defense minister of Burkina Faso, Kasum Koulibaly, revealed that when the country used to rely on its traditional partners, most especially France, France usually imposed conditions on Burkina Faso in terms of what military equipment to buy and from whom they should buy it from. Not only were conditions imposed, but these conditions were sometimes unfavorable to Burkina Faso. As a result, Burkina Faso ended up buying a lot of military equipment that was very expensive and under unfavorable conditions imposed by its former partners. We often bought very expensive equipment under these conditions. We have a lot of tanks that were purchased mainly because we were tied, very tied, to a partner who imposed on us what to take, he explained. The most shocking thing is that Burkina Faso had no right to purchase military equipment from other countries. If it wanted to buy military equipment from Turkey or China, for example, it had to get a sort of approval from France. So this means if France says no, we forbid you, then they simply cannot get weapons. How atrocious. All this was made possible because of the ridiculous colonial pact signed between France and the 14 Francophone countries. However, Burkina Faso, just like Mali and Niger, have broken this colonial agreement with France after expelling its forces from their countries. Hence, they no longer need any approval to get weapons from other countries. However, even after getting its right to buy military equipment from whoever it wanted, there was still a stumbling block. In January 2024, Captain Traoré revealed during an interview that Burkina Faso had to start relying on Russia, Iran, Turkey, South Korea, and China, because the United States, France, and their allies refused to sell lethal weapons to them, and went as far as blocking the delivery of weapons bought elsewhere. He also revealed that in the West, there were countries that told them straight up, they cannot sell us something lethal. But, according to Captain Traoré, the country needs these weapons so that it will be able to stand a chance against these terrorists causing chaos and insecurity. Trahore also revealed that things were so bad for his army that, at times, they had to borrow arms from neighboring countries. There have been times, during certain operations, where we would borrow weapons from neighboring countries, come and do the operation, clean the weapons, and return them, he said. The stance taken by France and Western nations indicates a lack of concern for the insecurity prevalent in the Sahel region and its impact on the local population. If genuine care existed, their actions would undoubtedly differ. In contrast, countries such as Russia, China, Iran, and Turkey have facilitated Burkina Faso's acquisition of quality weaponry for its military without imposing restrictions or conditions. Recently, Burkina Faso's military showcased a new delivery of combat drones from Turkey to bolster its anti-terrorism endeavors. As reported by local media outlets in Burkina Faso, Traoré's administration disclosed this development. The delivery includes two advanced long-range Akinsi combat drones, a significant step towards enhancing the country's defense capabilities against regional terrorist and insurgent factions. Presented to Captain Traoré in a formal ceremony, these two Akinsi drones form part of a broader array of Turkish military equipment procured by Burkina Faso, encompassing five Berachter TB2 drones, along with various guided and unguided munitions. The Akinci drones are believed to have been delivered to Burkina Faso's military earlier this year, with five Bayraktar TB2 drones arriving between April and May 2022. At the ceremony, Captain Traoré conveyed his pride in the drones' integration into the Burkina Bay military and emphasized their impact on military operations.
Traveray highlighted that the expansion of the drone fleet enables swift intervention and continuous surveillance, reinforcing the country's security posture. Burkina Faso's defense minister, Kasim Koulibaly, verified the enhancement of the military inventory and expressed appreciation to Turkey's president, Tayyip Erdogan, for the productive partnership, characterized as genuine and advantageous compared to that with Western nations. However, Turkey is not the only country that Burkina Faso has partnered with in terms of acquiring military equipment in recent times. During a handover ceremony held on the 12th of January 2024, Captain Traveré unveiled a new set of high-grade military equipment bought from China. According to the information released, these weapons include armored vehicles, self-propelled mortars, and various weapons and ammunition. Traoré revealed that the delivery is part of a strategic equipment plan that aims to strengthen the country's security forces in their fight against jihadist insurgents. At the ceremony, President Traoré was seen inspecting six of UMA-301 fire support vehicles, which are armed with 105mm guns and made by Chinese company Norinco. He also examined eight CS SM-1 self-propelled mortars, which use a Dongfeng light tactical vehicle as a platform and have a caliber of 81 millimeters. Interestingly, these are the first of their kind to be seen in Africa. In addition, Traoré was shown a series of shipping containers that contained a 60 millimeter GPW-90 mortar and rounds for RPG-7 type recoilless guns. And according to Minister of Defense Brigadier General Kasum Kalibali, this was the first of five consignments that are expected to arrive over the coming months under the Strategic Equipment Plan. The Strategic Equipment Plan had been earlier announced by Captain Trahore in his televised speech on December 31, 2023, although he didn't provide much detail, only saying that it would emerge over the coming year. And true to his words, this military equipment has been bought and is currently being used in the fight against terrorism. But how has Burkina Faso been able to purchase all this equipment, given that the West has cut off all financial aid to the country? The answer is quite shocking. During the handover ceremony held on January 12, Captain Traoré revealed that the acquisition of these high-grade weapons was made possible not just from the country's revenue and strict management of resources, but also from its citizens. Trahore revealed that Burkina Bay citizens made generous contributions to enable the authorities to buy this equipment. You see, the media propagated by the West loves to paint pictures of the Trahore administration, that it is oppressive and abusing human rights just like the United States. Just because it is a military government and not an ally of the West. But this is a distorted view. The fact is, the majority of the citizens in Burkina Faso are happy with the current administration of Captain Trahore, and if they were not, why would they have contributed to helping the military to purchase this equipment? But the West does not want that. And that is why articles from big Western media houses release false information about the Trahore administration to create a distorted view of Captain Trahore. This is why recently the authorities had to suspend two Western media giant firms the BBC, and the Voice of America for broadcasting a rights report accusing the army of attacks on civilians in its battle against jihadists. According to the Communications Authority, the decision was necessary because the report contained hasty and biased declarations without tangible proof against the Burkinave army. It also said the approach of the BBC and VOA undermines the cardinal principles of information processing in that it constitutes disinformation likely to bring discredit to the Burkinave army. The authority also added that this could also create disturbances to public order. If the reports are actually true, where is the evidence? Ever since Captain Traoré and the other military junta kicked the French army out, cut off relationships with the West, and chose to partner with Russia, China, and Turkey, the media reports concerning the country have either been on how jihadist attacks have increased or how the country's soldiers killed civilians. There are never any good reports on the efforts the military juntas have made to combat the insecurity. How many of these media houses carried the news of how the West stopped Burkina Faso from getting good weapons? How many of them carried the news of how Burkina Faso had to sometimes borrow weapons from their neighbors? The hypocrisy of the West is always shocking, but nevertheless, 
there is no doubt that Africa will overcome no matter what. The fact is, the military government of Captain Traore is the best thing that has happened to Burkina Faso in a long time. And with Captain Traore at its head, Burkina Faso will be able to combat the insecurity, making the country safe again. The successful acquisition of military equipment for the Burkina military is a testament to Traoré's commitment to leveraging cutting-edge technology to achieve national security objective.